Hello everyone. So we're back for another Saturday and um, in our our journal. Having a lot of fun just kind of planning my pages and thinking about things. So this week I went and took some photos of some of the botan my botanical collection and pieces that I have and I did some flat lays as well kind of mixing bits and pieces just kind of playing with the cabinet of curiosity and just also figuring out like how I want to work these elements into my book so that's what we're going to do today and um and let's just keep on moving forward um one of the things from last week um you noticed how like I really preserved this page because I liked that Asian text it was a part of the printables and by using the tracing paper that I stained it really did give it even more of an aged look this is a pocket so we will end up putting something in there um, and so I like this push and pull between like abstract you know art that really kind of really speaks more to my personal aesthetic um, for collage and scripting and um, that sort of thing with more of the kind of idea of the cabin of curiosity and working with some of the old older ledger papers and things like that we've done so you're going to notice as you travel with me through this book I kind of do this push and pull between sort of my personal art aesthetic um, the way I would just approach collage and weaving in these found elements that really speak to like you know cabinet of curiosity and what have you so when we're done the whole book is not going to look like something that all came out of vintage journals and it's not all going to look like they're just all my abstract collages I really like this this balance of you know weaving them in together so that's also I'm hoping as we continue to work together that'll be sort of a walk away for you as well like how you can kind of push and pull historic um, images and ephemera and and those kind of love documents but into your work so your own personal art aesthetics when you're done it really does look like your art aesthetic that you've also infused with ephemera and ancient documents and don't worry if right now you're not quite sure what your art aesthetic is working together um, this year is going to help develop it too because you're going to have just a lot of time to you know work with your collages work with these journal pages and what have you sort of see my approach to things as well and you know a lot will develop trust me this is what regular journaling practice is all about it's practice 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 it's like being a concert pianist and never practice the piano until the day of the concert or you know you sing you know an opera and you never train your voice until it's time to you know go sing the opera I mean but some kind of way artists sort of think that every time we come into the studio we just get to make this fabulous art and are disappointed when it doesn't work and spend like no time practicing so our art journal is our practice time together and then the other work that you do during the week you know you you know you may continue to do some other collages and making books and stuff and then those you can put a lot of your ideas that you flushed out in your journals into and the journals become a work of art also but it's really like your laboratory. It's your opportunity to apply, practice and play and have and have fun. So today I have these pages. I don't want to go with this color. This color is okay, but this orange is a little bright. So I will be covering this up. You know, I like this old page here, but we're gonna cover a lot of it up also, but we're gonna work with it. So let me show you, um, I'm trying to kind of work these out so I may make these printables for next month for February um, so that's why I thought I would do some work with them um, and if, if it's some because I know it's not easy for you all to get your hands on um, sometimes everybody you know, can't find the vintage papers and things and I, I am gifted a lot I go to flea markets and stuff and get a lot myself and so I have quite a bit of it. So I was thinking I might do a combination pack of sort of like this idea of the flat lay with larger elements of things that I have found 
in my, you know, foraging. And then it's nice to have big ones because you can break the elements down and just work with bits and pieces of them. And at the same time, I also was playing with the idea of making them page size so that, you know, they could flush out on a page as well. So I'm still playing with it. Let me know what you think. Um, but I'm, I'm probably will put some of these together. So that way, if you wanted to get some, um, you know, you could have access to some of these images as well. Okay, so let's figure out what we're going to do there. I did bring some of the Mamigami, the oil ones, because I think I'm going to use this piece right here. Um, these are such cool pieces. I think um, this is nice too, but I probably won't use it on this one but it has that old wallpaper look. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use this right here. And then I went through and pulled out my stamp box because since I think um, since I'm working with the, the flora and the, these um, little insects, I have some stamps. I always collect these when I travel. I got these, um, in San Marcos Square in Venice. I think that's where I got these. It's a little um, stamp shop right there in the corner. For those of you who've been to Venice, you know what I'm talking about. It's a neat little stamp shop in the corner um, opposite the, the, um, the cathedral. And um, no, I don't, you know what? I didn't get those there. I got these in Amsterdam. I got these in a, um, in a stamp shop in Amsterdam, these. These are the ones that I got in, um, in Venice. But I like these because it had like the birds and some of the animals. I, so I may actually put like a, I like to actually, you know, glue stamps down on these kind of things as well. So I, I think I'm gonna leave these out so I can do that. So also, when you're traveling, you know, grab those stamps or, you know, online, Etsy, a lot of times you can find auctions of stamps and stuff like that. And you know, I don't spend a lot of money on them because I like to use them in my work. But um, they're really cool to be able to use. So grab those when you can find them. <clears throat> and, um, And let me see. So pull this out. Put this to the side. Um, also, I was kind of in my box over here, my scrap stuff. So I have this right here. Actually, my daughter was shopping on Amazon. I want to say she found these on Amazon. And they look like these. And they're like reproductions of like these old book pages and stuff and she said oh, mom I thought you would like them so she just got them for me they weren't for like a gift or anything in particular so I went through them and pulled this one out because I like the color and the texture of it and I thought this would be neat to put down on that page so I'll see if I can try to find them get the link from her so if that's something you want because I don't think they probably weren't that expensive and if you're looking for documents that you can just use in your journal these would be fun to do and they're a good size too because they're not really big pieces so you can literally put it down and almost get the whole image on there and I think that's kind of cool to transform the pages so I'll remember to link that and then this is a jelly printed um, circle that I did it has like a little gold paint and stuff on it but I like this sort of abstract bit so I may actually glue this down here somewhere and then this is had some old book pages in this thing. Um, I don't know. These are 1188. I know this book is old, but I didn't think it was 1100s. It could be 1300s. But anyway, um, so I thought I could work with that. So I have some bits and pieces in here that I think I'm going to kind of play with. Um, 
And, and then I'm also thinking that I'm gonna work with this image here. Now, I purposely, when I reproduced these, I did them so that they would be not so much color in them and be a little bit more subdued and almost grayed out so that it kind of gave it a more vintagey look. So I'm still playing around with the actual filter or how I'm gonna, like these aren't filtered. I've just photographed them in a, in a um, sort of a mild light, natural sunlight. Um, so I'm playing with it, but you know, anyway, I like this color tones. I think that can work well. So let's get started. Those are the pieces that I'm gonna be working with. I wanna just kind of go through everything with you all. And um, so let's start with this piece right here. I think I want to put it down right here. That'll kind of, I'll just let this kind of spread to the other side. But I am going to go ahead and rip that straight edge so it's not such a straight edge on it. Just take and rip it. So. Get my other ruler. Sometimes that other cork one is uh, just about gone. It's broken in places. And so it doesn't grip the same way. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to get my Giotto for this because I'm gluing on top of the uh, acrylic. I just feel like that color is a little bright for what I want to do in the book right now. So... That's why I'm gonna cover it. So, oh, okay. Also, I wanted to just kind of keep on following up on the um, on the on our Pinterest board, our Cabinets of Curiosity board. So, for those who want to be a contributor which means you're, you'll be able to access the board like I can and you can add stuff to it, then just put your Pinterest name um, below. Like whatever, you know, whatever your, the way I could find you on Pinterest. And then what I can do is I can send you an invite. So you'll see it on your Pinterest notifications and then you can cl click that invite and then you'll be able to come on. That's probably gonna be the easiest way to bring you on as a contributor. So for those of you who wanna kinda of add to the board and help me flesh it out, we have two boards. We have the Cabinet of Curiosity ones and then we have our um, Eclectic Artist, um, Selective Hoarders. <laughs> so just you know, leave me your, your Pinterest name below in the comments and tell me that you want to um, be a contributor and that I can bring you on. Look how good that looks, see? I mean, just, you know, a simple little piece of paper. And I don't think these were more than a few dollars, so I think it's a good deal, actually. Um, and I like the color of this. Now, what I'm going to do, see if I can just rip this close to it so I can... I want to be able to put this down. This is on tracing paper. So when I put it down, you should, you know, so it should be a, a bit translucent. So we'll be able to see. Okay. And then we're going to get get it out of there as well. So it's kind of let me see if I can use it's tracing papers. I don't know how absorbent it's gonna be. I don't think it is. Let me just do it like this. Normally I, I would use my water 
to um, that's not the point to just rip it, but this is uh, like a tracing paper or a deli paper, so it's not going to it's not going to absorb the water the same way. I just want to get some of this white out. I want to leave some of the brush strokes in here. So we can kind of see through it. And see, it's like a circle here and one well, there. So I kind of like that in the middle there. So I think I'm going to put that down. But let's just kind of get all our ideas flushed out. Um, and I like the idea that I can see some color through here. Like I can see through here, I can sort of see there's an orange and there's another color bluish here. And the same thing down here. I just didn't want it to be prominent. So I do like that. Oh, I like this too. This is a piece of just corrugated cardboard that I uh, painted. Oh, I like that. And it becomes like a little tuck spot. I might put this down. Let me see, where's the fold going to be? Because that is not going to fold. So it's going to def definitely need to be inside of the okay we may do that so on this side let's figure out what we're going to do I think I'm going to let this edge kind of float in on this paper because I like all this staining there so I don't want to cover it all up so I think I'm going to do it maybe put this down like that glue that do have a little bit of this which would really be cool let's go ahead and glue this down I want to make sure I put it this way I don't want that edge there <clears throat> okay so get our so this is I, 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 I have collected a lot of old books over the years and um, some of them are quite old from my early days of working at the Smithsonian when I would get, you know, a lot of the books that were just old or falling apart or they didn't want to preserve, you know, uh, you know, they would give them to us. So this, I want to say, is from the collection of books that I got then. And so I definitely like taking them and using them in my work. And I have enough of them that I don't have to reproduce them. But sometimes I do reproduce them. It just sort of depends. But just don't worry about your books being too precious. Because if you have a book that's worth thousands of dollars, okay, then at that point, either you keep a book because it has some sentimental value to you and you don't want to mess it up. You don't want to, you know, um, go in on it. Or... You may keep it because it's a very rare book and it's worth, you know, thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars. But a lot of books that are worth just a few hundred, there's normally two, three, four hundred pages in a book. So if you did it per page and then you use it in your artwork and let's say you turned around and sold your artwork even for fifty dollars. How many pages would you have to use in order for the book to pay for itself? You know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. Or even if you just use it as gifts to give away, you're still not only giving your art, but you're still saving money because you'd have to spend money on the gifts. So if you make art with things and then give them to people, you know, look at it like that. You know, I know sometimes it's hard because people think, oh, this book could be valuable. Well, you know, like if you don't know that it's valuable, and it doesn't have any real value to you, then I wouldn't let that be the thing that stopped me from using the book. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on there. And that's from somebody who has, um, you know, I've worked at the Library of Congress in the rare book room, and I learned how to make books and restore books and stuff um, when I apprenticed there. And... I've studied bookbinding with um, 
an old apprenticing structure. So I'm, I'm you know, I'll, it's always more to learn, but I've been binding books for more than 30 years. Um, and I've taught it at the Smithsonian. I taught it at the Corcoran School of Art. So, you know, you're talking for somebody who really knows books. So, you know, don't sweat it. See, see how that turned? I like that. It just has that little paint, like almost like I painted on there, but it's a jelly print. And I do these, it's called, I call them fragments, but I like to do these because then you get it right. You pick the circle that you know you like, so you don't have to worry about jelly printing here and then it's wrong. It, like it messes something up or something, you know. But I like that element, unexpected element over top of this, um, this document. Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do, I haven't decided what I'm going to still do here. I do like the idea of this being down there. It just becomes a tuck spot. And it's unexpected, this sort of card, card, corrugated cardboard. But I think what I want to do now is let's look at, I believe I want to do um, this. Let's just do it like this first. Try to tear it slowly because I want to get that sort of really rough edge, but I don't want to have it go south on me. And okay. Oh, see, I like that. Ah, so this I did print on onion skin, and I know onion skin is. It's almost like a bad word because it's so hard to get. So for those of you with onion skin, you know, you can use yours. And if you don't, you can definitely use tracing paper. So you can, you know, like get a decent weight tracing paper. They have tracing paper about the same weight as, um, as copier paper. Try to get one that's the same weight as copier paper that you use. And you shouldn't have any problem with it going through your printer. But if you do, you can also just take and attach the paper with repositional, you know, glue or something like that onto um, a piece of copier paper and then it will run through your, through your um, copier. But like for me, this just seems to just go right through the copier. This uh, onion skin. See, I love that. I think that looks good and the colors work but now we need to have something interesting going on up there and let me see where Try cutting this out. I don't know, but I think that could be interesting. So you know, you can take these, uh, use them in whole and part. Okay. <clears throat> That's nice. Because we just want to kind of build up these layers. Just keep on building up layers. Let me put something there. I do like the idea of this going maybe down the side. Keep on the time here because sometimes I get to work and not pay attention and then the camera stops. Uh, 
Oh, see, that'll look nice right there. I like this underneath there just as an additional layer. That could go here. And you need to put something right in there. Oh, I know I'm going to use my stamp too. Let me pull that, that green stamp out. I don't know that really kind of caught my, my eye. I think that one looks a little too new. You want one that looks a little older or something, you know, maybe a different color. Sometimes I make my stamps old, look old. So let's just see if I decide to go with that. I might have to rough these up because they look a little too new. But it's all a possibility. Okay. Let me figure out. Be nice to have something like that back there, but I don't want that. Let me see what else we have. I should have some of my, um, some text on some onion skin. I think I have a piece in here somewhere. Alrighty. So, let's see. Oh, I have this too. I was thinking about using that before. Oh, I like that. Sort of like the these tones. Okay, let's go ahead and tear a bit of this first. <clears throat> and something like that would be good. And then this will go down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to gluing because if we don't start gluing, you never really know. So I'm going to use my Giotto. This is some of the Mommy Gami that we did with the oil. And it's still got a little bit of oil. You can see seeps out a little bit, but it's basically dry. And I definitely will use the... Um, the Giotto. And it'll stick just fine. You don't have to worry about it lifting or anything. Once it dries, so we'll have enough glue there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get this down also. Time to make commitments, because if I don't, you know, just kind of keep on moving and moving and moving stuff. The idea is for, you know, the page to look like a collection also. And I'll put this down. I like that. this down and I like the fact that though I have this uh, <clears throat> I'm, I've covered the page up by using the onion skin you see how much of the page you still see underneath because it just goes so beautifully translucent so you know you're not losing anything you're just getting some really good layers and even that shell with this piece of rusted bit that I did as a flat lay you really see how that rusted bit against that shell pops nicely so really haven't lost anything there let me just go ahead and cut this
Okay. It's looking good. And then let's go ahead and put this piece down the side. Just add a bit of Asian text. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do that. For this one, I'm definitely going to use the uh, the Uhu because this this book page is very um, old and brittle. So the uh, I got to be careful with the Uhu, but the Giotto would really kind of do me in. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this in place. Just adds a bit of old world interest to our page. And because it's also the Asian paper, you can see through it too, which is nice. So you can see how you can still sort of see, you know, you can see through it. I really like that. See how it doesn't look so bright? It doesn't like, because I didn't want it to look white or too much color. I felt it would look a little bit more authentic if, uh, my finger, if it um, flushed out like this. I really like this. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so let me see, what do I want to do? Just, I always pick up little bits and pieces and just lay them down and sort of see. But I feel like I like this. I, I really want to put this there because I think it's just unusual. And I think it just adds some more texture to the page that, um, Otherwise, wouldn't be there. So let's just go ahead and cut this right here. Okay. And we're just going to glue that in place. So let's make sure it all closes before I... Yeah. This thing is going to be really chunky by the time it, we're done. Because I'm already adding thick stuff to it. So, but that's what we do. Oh, I love this page. Just being able to reproduce that on, on, on the onion skin or a tissue paper makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, I've been using the cockle onion skin, but truthfully, I started experimenting with the, the smooth, and I can give you a source for smooth onion skin. It's a paper source. It's not expensive. When it comes, it's going to be smooth. It's not going to be like old, like how the old paper is what they call cockle. You can see it has like the little bumps in it. But because this is just ridiculously expensive, when you can print on it and when you go to use it like this, it smooths out anyway. Oh God, that smoothed out anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> so honestly, for those who are having a hard time getting, you know, like some old vintagey kind of onion skin, I'll leave a, um, let me make sure I make a note of that. But I'll leave a thing for the onion skin. Let's put this down. My PVA. Yeah, it's, it's in, the, in the States. It's called Paper Source. Now, I can't tell you where you could find it in Europe, unfortunately. Um, but I know where you can get it here. And it's really worth it considering what onion skin has become, honestly. The price on eBay, eBay and stuff like that has just gone crazy. Okay. Just kind of hold this down. I kind of made sure that I stayed away from that edge because I want it to be able to turn nicely. But I definitely wanted to put this on here. It's going to take a little bit for it to, to cure. And let's see. 
I might even put something right there. Once it dries, maybe just glue a bit of um, text, or I might not do anything because it's right there in the corner. You won't see it. So let, I'm gonna let this dry, and I'll come back and uh, sort of show you all finished up. But I like it. I may do something here. What could we do there? This is where uh, a stamp would come in nicely. If I could find some that don't look so new. Actually, I do like a stamp against this. These look pretty good. They don't look too... I can go ahead and rough it up too. I like that bird. I'm going to show you what we're going to do real quick while we're waiting for things to dry. Just another one of those little tips. Um, let's try. Let me go ahead and just put a clamp on this while it's drying. And then I'll show you how we can rough that stamp up real quick to go with our, our look. Okay, that it's unexpected, you know. Okay, I need to grab my stamp pad, the not fray burlap, but let me find my stamp pads and I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back with my stamp pad. Now, what I like to do for the most part, oops. Okay, what did I just do with the stamp? Oh, here it is. <laughs> what I like to do for the most part is, you know, I want things to kind of like get an old patina to it. And you know, I'm using a lot of sort of grays, um, blacks, these creamy tones, um, the sort of blue, like of our wood and stuff like that. So, I, you know, there's a few different ways you can go when you want to antique something. I know the classic way that you see done mostly is taking Tim Holtz vintage photo and then just kind of going around the edges and all that kind of stuff and making it look old. Well, that doesn't really so much work for my style. Like, um, you know, sometimes that has its place, but it's like only one type of old, you know, where there's all different kinds of old because there's all different soil from all parts of the world. So the soil in, in the south of France is more clay gray clay where the soil here in this in the american southwest is a little bit more rougey ready brown so the soil that's floating in the air that gets trapped in the moisture mo mo molecules that then settle on old stuff over time and age it is what gives th it's the color so it's not like a universal uh old age you know what I mean it has to do with where you where you are the color of the soil all that kind of stuff the dirt the dust so anyway for this one I like this <clears throat> this sort of creamy color and I want to definitely put it down like right here I think that'll work well so it's going to go nicely with my palette it just looks a little too new right you see it's a little too new so what I'm going to do is I like to take a little bit of pumice stone and pumice stone is like a, a chalky, it's like a French gray to me. It's chalky color. And I just take, put a little bit down on my, on, um, I, you can use wax paper or anything. I was using this because I only have brown wax paper and I wanted to be able to see the color of it. So I've kind of used this. I need to get a new palette. But at least you can see the color that it comes out as. And then just spritz it a little bit. Just want to spritz it a little bit. And it's going to beat up. See how that's beating up? And I just kind of like rub it around with my finger just to kind of get it. See sort of this chalky gray, you know, kind of color. And then taking the stamp, just kind of dab it in there <clears throat> and you know I just kind of pick it up let it dry I could you could use your your um 
you could use your um, heat gun to dry it up and you can see it's already it's subtle it's not like this big huge color change but as it dries it's going to have more of that sort of chalky color to it so we'll let that dry up and then what I like to do while it's a little bit wet like this still get my stamp pad and make another little bit of color and then taking it while it's wet I'll just kind of pick it up and then what happens is that I'll have places where the color will be a little darker so we kind of did a muted color all over and then you can kind of do this and it picks up just in places and it just makes it look a little bit more grunge you don't have to overdo it and you can do this you can try this with different colors I mean you can even do this with vintage photo which I've done before when I kind of want that color but to me it just makes it see how it starts let me let it focus okay I'll let it focus you can see how it just you we're picking up all that little bit of grunge and stuff on there so we're not overdoing it but we're just doing it enough for it not to look new and as it dries oh my goodness it's so good because it just gets chalkier um, and this this particular color pumice will really settle down into a nice kind of chalky kind of grungy gray so and just get a little bit more <laughs> and then we can glue this down yep perfect now that'll go down here nicely. Oh yes, yeah, so much better. See, it's not even popping off the page like it was before. And that little bit of, let me see if I can get it to focus close up. My camera only wants to focus within a certain depth, like right there normally. So see how it, it really, you can see that grunge that picked up. So, this pumice stone is just like it's one of my faves in the Tim Holtz. Okay, so let's go ahead now and using the glue stick, I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And I think that'll take care of it. Now, as I said before, we're working forward, but there's times we'll come back and especially as we really build up our stash of all little bits and bobs that we're using there'll be times that you'll come backwards and maybe add something else or you know like I'll see something that I'm using and then oh yeah that works in so much better with this paper you almost can't tell where the paper ends and the stamp begins I like that so there's a pocket here you notice I don't like go right and fill the pockets that's a pocket right there too so what I like to do is I like to organically, as I'm going through, there'll be pieces of stuff that I want to hold on to, just like we have a pocket here. We're going to put stuff in them. Um, you know, like how I stuck that in here because I want to remember to use it, but I'll probably end up putting something else in here. And who knows, I might keep this and end up maybe making a little booklet or something to put inside of it and just keep this in here. Um... And I just stuck that in there because I like that piece and I know I wanted to use it. But so that's how I kind of go through and do my pockets. I'm not going to just like finish it all just to finish it because there will be something else inevitably. And maybe even I'm out and I'll find some kind of little found leaf or feather or twig or something. I'll be like, oh, that'll be perfect for my journal. And I'll come and stick it in the pockets. So I personally like to have pockets available for those impromptu kinds of things that you want to add to your journal so that this becomes a living journal as well like it's living with you throughout your um you know your days um in and out of the studio like I have this piece of flat um this is yarrow see and I can actually take and sandwich that between some tracing paper or something like that and ultimately stick it in the book I may even make a like an insert or something for that. So I had that up here. I had already pressed it. And that's up there. So yeah, like just, we're going to take our time and enjoy the process. But I really like the way these pages came out. So um, I should have these printables 
um, if you guys want to grab them. I'll let you know in the beginning of February. But I, I, I'm going to put some different combinations. But I think I like this color tone. But I'll keep on playing with it. Alrighty. Well, I hope you enjoyed this session. As always, as we go through our, our journal. And make sure that you... Let me know if you want to be a contributor on the Pinterest boards and then just give me your Pinterest name and then I will send you an, in, an invite. You'll look for the invite and then if you, you know, agree, you know, join, then you'll be able to post on the board like you can post on your own pages. Okay. All righty. Well, once again, it's been a lot of fun. You see how that's really drying up and, you know, I always enjoy my time here with you all. So if you enjoyed the video, please thumb it up. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hang out with us. We're going to go through this 52 weeks of, or 365 days of art journaling in this traveler's notebook Midori style. I love, I love the, how it feels in your hands and what have you. And we're going to fill this up and she's just going to be so luscious and, and we'll keep on with our theme of cabinet of curiosities. This month it was Wabi Sabi. Um, and then we'll go into next month. There'll be a different um, aesthetic of, of Japanese art. So we're just exploring the aesthetics of Japanese art along with our own journal, with our cabinet of curiosities. And we're just mixing and matching lots of ideas and cultures and um, ways of exploring our world in our journal. All right, take care. Love you guys. Enjoyed hanging out with you also on this premiere. I, I love hanging out on Saturday mornings with you all. Take care and until next week, much love. Enjoy your time in your studio and happy creating. Bye-bye.